you know, this is really deep psychological territory in a way. Uh, it goes really, really far back to, I think, to the place where um, my father, who was in the Vietnam War, uh, came back after being absent for a, a year. And I don't have a conscious memory of it, but I think that I, I have, a, have a memory of kind of wanting some explanation for what was happening. Uh, there was a strange man who was showing up, and, um, and, and the explanations weren't really uh, forthcoming. And I, I just have a sense that, you know, um, that I resolved that if no one was going to give me the language to understand this thing, that I would just make up the language myself. So from a very early age, I had been really verbal and telling stories. And you know, I think the first book that I ever wrote was in kindergarten. Uh, and so it really started there. And then once that happens, you start getting positive feedback from people who like literate, you know, little kids, and they like high school students who can string sentences together and write interesting things. So I got a lot of positive feedback, you know, uh, in in school and including here at UT. I mean, some of the really best, most formative experiences that I had as a writer and as a young writer were here. So what I did today was uh, read a piece that uh, I published in the Morning News that is a, a satire of what you might receive from your CSA, your Community Supported Agriculture uh, outfit or your farmer at the farmer's market uh, who's telling you about changes that they are making for the upcoming year except that it's kind of from your local writer who ha is saying that uh, he's only going to produce artisanal organic words uh, in the coming year. They have to read. Um, that writing without reading is kind of um, only half of the task that you know when you're writing you're becoming part of a tradition and part of a community and you have to learn the language and learn the ways of that community and that and that tradition and also in this day and age you're becoming part of an economy um, you are not just reading and, and an, an economy that's not just about money but that's about attention uh, when you read someone's stuff, you are spending the currency of attention, and everyone deserves that. And I sort of believe that all of these things go around, uh, that if you expect your other people to spend their attention currency on you, you should spend your attention cur currency on them as well.